Well, hi everyone. My name is Kelly Angler. I'm a university recruiter with Grant Thornton in our Detroit office. Um, been with Grant Thornton for about four years now. Looking forward to talking with you guys about resume essentials and I'll kick it off to Olivia to also introduce herself. My name is Olivia Forte. I'm with BDO and I'm a campus recruiter. I support our Detroit practice, but I actually sit in Cleveland, Ohio and also support our Cleveland office. I've been with BDO for about two years now, which is kind of crazy. Um, but we can't wait to share some tips and tricks all about the resume with you guys. All right, so I'm going to start here. We'll try to make this short and sweet, but just to give you a high level of the agenda, we're just going to go do a quick overview of the five topics we'll be covering today regarding how to put together your resume. So see each of the items here. All right, so first off, we're going to start with the order. So you might be asking yourself, how do I lay out my resume? So I like to look at it as when you look at this order, you want to put the most important and highlighted items at the top of the resume. So the things that the recruiters for sure want to look at first. Um, however, you know, you could, we recommend this order, but you can put it within, within any order that you want or deem necessary. Um, and then in the next couple of slides, we're going to detail out everything. So we're going to go to the next slide, which will cover the header. All right, so this is the most important. This is what's going to draw a, a recruiter to your resume. So we wanna make sure your contact information is all up to date um, and recruiters cannot contact you if this isn't current. So and another thing I like to add is even when you have your phone number on there, always make sure that your voicemail is set up and that it is open. We, there are so many times that I contact a phone number and you know you, you don't, you're not able to leave a voicemail if the voicemail is full. So always make sure that it's updated. For the email address, if you are nearing the end of your academic career, um, you want to make sure to use your Gmail or Yahoo account. Sometimes you no longer have access to your campus email, so always use that really personal email address. And then once you graduate, you know, you'll be able to see it moving forward and recruiters will always be able to keep your email on file for the months or years to come in the future. Um, Another important step is making sure that you have both addresses. So when I say both addresses, I mean sometimes you're going to school in Cleveland, but you may want to look for a full-time position or an internship in Detroit. So when you apply to um, a position, the recruiters are going to want to see both addresses. So we're like, oh, this makes sense. You know, you're looking to relocate or you're from here. So make sure you have both addresses on there if you're not applying within your hometown. And then always keep it nice, big, and easy font to read. So the next slide, this slide here, oh, that was the example, sorry. Um, but just make sure it's big and apparent. <laughs> All right, so the career objective. So this is an option on your resume. It's not necessarily something that you have to have. A lot of questions that we get um, from students are, do I need a cover letter? So a lot in today's day and age, we're really seeing the cover letter replaced with this career focus or their objective. And really what this is, is this is a one, this is a one sentence paragraph, not paragraph, but almost like sentence that you can put on your resume to say why you want a specific position at a specific company. So you, if you have room to add it, always add it. If you don't, you, it's not fully necessary, you can replace this when you're emailing a recruiter, whatever that may be. But um, if you have internships, jobs, and experience and having trouble fitting it at the top of the page, the, object, the objective could be the first thing that you take off your resume so that you can fit it all onto one page. So just make sure you update this according to your audience. You don't want to send it to one company and it have another company's name on it or a different position on it, for example. So these are just some examples. Like I said, short and sweet one sentence to obtain an associate position with Grant Thornton in the fall of 2021 um, or to obtain a tax position. So, you know, you might be applying for multiple internships. You might be seeing, oh, let me try to get a tax internship or an audit internship. So make sure to identify that within the career objective as well. And just always make sure to save it with the appropriate name so that you're uploading it and sending it to the right company. All right, so the next step is education. So what to include and things like that. So it's very, this is a very important piece of your resume. You wanna make sure that your GPA is listed as well as your major GPA. So your cumulative and your major GPA are both important for campus recruiters to identify and see if you fall within their requirements, especially if it's higher than your overall GPA. Um, so you wanna highlight if you're in the, over, the honor roll, um, any achievements that you have or dean's list, you, this is really your opportunity to make yourself stand out academically. 
Um, another thing you also want to include is what should we really look at and we know how to place you in the right the right internship or the right full-time position. And the timing of that is include the date in which you will graduate and be eligible to sit for the CPA exam. So I always see a little blurb on there that says 150 date eligibility. This doesn't mean that you necessarily have to have your CPA exam completed. It just means you have to be eligible to obtain the license. So having that 150 credit hours completed. So this next slide is gonna show you an example. Perfect. So yeah, it looks like a lot, but it's really important. This is what a lot of the recruiters are going to really focus on. And that's why it's super important to have it at the top of your resume. Um, easy for us to find. And as you saw, as you see, it says like May 2020 over there. Um, something that you can add there. Um, if you, if your expected graduation date is 2020, you could say expected graduation date with 150 credit hours. You could just put that all in one line um, or you can add it as a bullet point, just where, however you wanna make that apparent to the recruiters. And then I will give it to Kelly. Perfect, thanks Olivia. Um, next, we're just gonna hit on work experience. So just some items that you can include as you know, the company in the city of your previous work experience, um, the position held, the month and year of employment, and then just any descriptive bullets. And I would say to think through the position, the internship or full-time position that you're applying to and make those bullets apply to kind of the position you're looking for, thinking about the skill sets um, that the employer is looking for in a future internship and what you can tie it back to from your previous work experience. Um, and generally with your work experience, you'll bullet it with, you know, at the top having your most recent work experience dating back to, you know, work experience from a longer time ago. So just keeping it kind of in, in order and notating kind of the years and dates that you held that position. Um, and just making sure that the bullets are appropriate tense. So if it's a current position that you hold, you know, you would have it in present tense versus past tense for some of those older work experiences. Um, and I think too, just with work experience, you can always find transferable skills. So if you, you know, babysat or were a nanny or worked at a grocery store, you can always find customer service, communication skills within those. So definitely, don't shy away from adding things if you don't think it's relevant because you always can find some transferable skill that will apply to a future internship or full-time position in public accounting. So here we just have a quick example. Um, just what I talked through, you know, having the employer, the location, the dates that you were there, a couple bullets underneath it highlighting, you know, what you accomplished within that work experience. And then next is your extracurricular experience. So firms definitely look at the, this to see, you know, what you're involved with outside of your academic career and maybe your work experience. So this could be student organization involvement, involvement with the MICPA, um, really anything that shows you're kind of going above and beyond developing those leadership skills. So you want to include the organization name, the position held, whether it's a member or if you sit on the e-board, um, definitely want to highlight that. And then similarly, the month and years that you were involved and then outlining, you know, in descriptive bullets, what you did or what you accomplished within this extracurricular experience. So as I mentioned, you know, it's, it's really good if you're not already involved with these types of things to certainly think through what you can get involved with at your campus or you know, within your community, just to show kind of you're going above and beyond to develop your leadership time management skills. So on this next slide, we have another example, you know, maybe it's a sorority or a fraternity um, that you're involved with or a student organization that you're involved with. And just a couple quick bullets highlighting, you know, what, what you are involved with. And then next up we have skills and interests. So this section is usually at the bottom of the resume. Um, you know, it's, it's not required by any means, but sometimes based on the position you're applying to, you wanna highlight some skills or maybe software that you are familiar with because you think it will be relevant for the position you're applying for. So um, this could include proficiencies, certain languages that either you know, you're fluent or familiar with, um, any hobbies and interests 
as this slide says, definitely use it sparingly. Um, save the space on your resume for really important things that you want to showcase to the employer. Um, so if you are going to include hobbies or interest, making sure that there's a tie back to the position you're applying for. You don't just want to say like you love to golf and kind of leave it at that. So um, just think through kind of what you're adding and if it's value add. And then just any other notable facts or, you know, skills or interests that you think are, are important to showcase on your resume. All right. So then when you're thinking about really a business resume, um, I'm sure many of you guys know this, but how many pages should your resume be? Recruiters are really just looking for a one pager to showcase your resume. Um, and I would recommend too, when you are submitting a resume on an application, making sure it's printed to PDF and that it's truly printing as one page. Sometimes, you know, with formatting it, there'll be some spaces onto a second page. So it really will be printing to PDF in two pages. Just make sure that that's really cleaned up and it's, you know, saving as one page um, and by printing it to PDF will allow you to verify that. Um, it just makes it a lot cleaner kind of on the application process. And then <laughs> should I print my resume on nice paper? I know we all really haven't seen each other in the past year, um, but you know, if and when we do go back in person, um, I think if you want to print your resume on nice paper, that's great. Employers definitely don't you know, require it. A lot of times you'll know at career fairs, um, employers are taking pictures of your resume. They're not taking the physical resume with them. Um, we love, love everything electronically, especially now we're very used to it. So I don't think you need to take the step of going out and buying nice resume paper to print out your resume on. And then just a couple final tips. Um, just keep in mind your resume really is the most important paper you're ever gonna write. It's really the first impression you have, you know, if you're first applying and then maybe meeting the employer at the career fair. So make sure it's good. Make sure there's no spelling errors or formatting errors. Um, make sure the font is consistent. So definitely take some time to review that and have others review it too. Cause sometimes you're looking at your resume for so long, you don't even notice some things just after looking at it. So definitely get a second set of eyes, utilize your career services, utilize the recruiters on today's call. We're more than happy to kind of help you with those types of things. Um, and the font should be simple and easy to read. Make sure you're not using something that's really busy and distracting and just spend the time constructing your resume. Um, you know, it is very important. So make sure you're spending the time to review it and updating it real time with, you know, relevant work experience that you've obtained, you know, more recently as you're applying to new positions. Um, make sure to utilize spell check. Those spelling errors really do stand out um, and kind of sometimes question, you know, your attention to detail. So. Utilize your resources to make sure your resume is perfect before you apply.